Um, so hello everybody, welcome uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're just gonna be doing some more baseball opening day talk. Uh, we're 10 games in, somewhat like something like that, into the season. Um, and first off, I'll just say, and you know, Michael, I'm sure you can agree with this. Really, you know, not taking any stock in the standings so far because it, it's just we're one sixteenth of the way through the season, um, and that's kind of just a a warning, I guess, to all baseball fans is, you know, wouldn't you agree? I mean, it doesn't matter where the standings are. I mean, some teams haven't even played five games. So um, you, you, you'd you agree with that, right? I mean. Yes. So my it is April 11th, and my Mets are sitting at two and three right now. Yeah, I mean, so, um, you've played five yeah, games. Yeah, it's, it's still really early. Uh, you see every year teams get off to really hard, hot starts and then cool off or teams get off to really bad starts and then heat up, right? If you've, uh, if you've ever talked to a Nationals fan before, they'll tell you all about how they started 19 and 31. Uh, similarly, the, uh, the Mariners started like 13 and 1 a couple years ago yeah. and ended up having one of the worst records in the league. So, yeah, it's, it's early. Uh, I'm not putting too much stock in, into what happens now. Mm-hmm. Well, my first question that I wanted to get into, um, which is something I was wondering, is, you know, looking at the standings uh, projections and in the MLB, I think, fan graphs projection, they had what I thought was, in my opinion, probably the second best team in the National League East, the Atlanta Braves at 82 and 80 uh, behind the Nationals and behind the Mets. Um in terms of division standings. Um, first, I'll ask you, one, do you agree with this projection? Where would you put the Braves in the NL East? And second off, uh, why do you think, you know, they have the Braves at such an underrated position where when, you know, last year they didn't have Mike Soroka and they were one game away from making it to the World Series? Right. So I think, first of all, I think this was I hate to split hairs here. I think this was not Fangraphs, but rather Baseball Prospectus's Pakoda mm-hmm. uh, projections that had them. I think Fangraphs was a little nicer to them, but in general, the Braves don't do well in uh, in projections, and they they always seem to outperform them. So I definitely don't think they're going to be behind the Nationals. They're a good team. They're mm-hmm. a really good team. Uh, I like their pitching. I don't love their pitching. I like it. Uh, yeah. They, their lineup is, if there's any uh, complaint about it compared to other like top lineups, it is a little bit top heavy, but it's still really good. Uh, I, they're definitely not an 82 win team. They're, I, uh, they're, I think they're pretty easily a top two team in the division along with the Mets. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't, I yeah I I would would not be surprised if they end up in first in the division. Mm-hmm. I think it could be pretty close between the Mets and the Braves. It yeah. kind of depends how well the Mets stay healthy, right? Like uh, if Carlos Carrasco right need him on the field, Noah Syndergaard coming back from Tommy John, mm-hmm. will he be the same? Just uh, you know Seth Lugo starting on the injured list as well. So I think that's what's going to come down to it. Yeah. Uh, essentially, how much teams are on the field, but. At at the very worst, the Braves are a good wild card team. Yeah, uh, I don't think they're going to finish it. I agree with that, and not only that, but um, I mean, I think one thing we have to acknowledge is how good the NL East is. I mean, you're talking about it's probably the best division in baseball. It definitely is. I mean, the Marlins would be competitive, I think, in any other division. Maybe I mean that might be a stretch, but the Marlins are really good. For they're they're definitely the best uh, projected fifth place team in any division and it's not even close yeah i can see that um so yeah i mean you're looking at the phillies who i you know i said would finish fourth are i mean they have a very solid team um you know they don't have they don't have good back end starting pitching um but they have a good lineup and they they have uh a decent bullpen in my opinion um I'm, i'm concerned about their bullpen but they definitely have good pieces. They improved it, though. They did improve it. Yeah, they did improve it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Naris as a closer, I don't know how you can't be worried about that. Um, <laughs> but, um, 
I mean, yeah, it's a really good division. Um, for me, you know, and I don't, I don't know, Michael, who did you have? Did you have the Braves or the, the Mets winning the division? I don't know. I think it's going to be really close. I did not do formal projections this year. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I don't know how it just kind of slipped my mind. Didn't feel like doing them. Yeah. Uh, well, I was watching hockey. That's <laughs> yeah, no, I guess that's fair. Probably the number one reason, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty close. It will be close. I personally, um, I, I had the Braves just because I think their lineup is slightly better. I trust their bullpen more. Um, and I won't, I won't say their starting pitching is better. I, I think the Mets have better starting pitching just because of their back end. I like their back end more. Um, but when the, when the Braves get Soroka back, I mean, it'll be very close. Um, the Braves have a very deep, uh, deep rotation. I don't think Soroka is as good as a lot of people think. And, uh, <laughs> well, surprise, 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 analytics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So, okay, I don't think Soroka's bad, but here's the thing about Soroka. He's a ground ball pitcher, and that means that there's going to be a lot of variance in what his potential results are going to be, mm -hmm. which I also think is a reason analytics uh, and, like, projection systems are so low on them. They have a lot of pitch-to-contact guys, yep. and a lot of, uh, if you look at, like predictive pitching metrics generally strikeouts are a lot more valuable because there's a lot more individual uh ability that goes into strikeouts mm -hmm. than like a ground out because right like you have to rely on defense for that yeah and now the braves have good infield defense which means i which is why part of i think you know they project the pitchers to not do as well but pitchers can kind of get get not like bailed out but they'll be helped by the defense but in yeah. general uh, the Braves have ground ball pitchers. So, like, mm -hmm. Soroka, he had an ERA of, like, 240 or something. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not going to happen. His his advanced metrics said he's probably more of, like, a high threes ERA guy. Interesting. Where I think he's going to settle in until he gets more swings and misses. Uh, but I <laughs> Which is a, never going to happen. A compilation of Soroka getting outs on balls hit 105 miles per hour or harder. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a lot of them were ground balls. So I, I no, I feel kind of bad. He's good at inducing grounders, and grounders are more likely to be outs than fly outs or line drives, and that's good. So you can treat this as my official apology to Braves fans for implying that Sirico was bad. But <laughs> well, no, no. But one I thing I will for that video to blow up, it ended up with something like thirty thousand views. Uh, something like 500 likes wow. and about 80 quote tweets from Braves fans uh, telling me how much of a loser I am. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. It yeah, Braves, so fun. Braves Nation really came out. One thing I will say, and I'm they not... Are, they are intense. I, I, do, I do think it is a little interesting, and this is not a, you know, this is just a friendly chirp, I would say, is that, you okay. know... We we love Marcus Stroman, you know, and and he's a ground ball pitcher too. We love him, but Mike Soroka, ah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I and I think Soroka's, I think Soroka's a lot better than than Marcus Stroman. Um, I would say a lot better. I, no, a lot better is not. Yeah, a lot better is a reach, but he's better than. I think, I think they're similar, right? They're like guys who are high threes ERA, maybe like in like a neutral environment who are generally have a lot of variance in their results, who have the potential for a lot of variance in the results because of the nature of how they pitch. Like, I, I you know, they're, it's like, he's a ground baller. Like, that's, yeah. that's what ground ballers do. I, I think that's the difference, I, I, I think the difference between the two is um, Soroka knows he's a ground baller sometimes or all the time, and Stroman sometimes doesn't. I think Stroman sometimes thinks he's a power pitcher and it, you know has a lot of his I mean most of his hard hit balls are off his fastball I mean his, his off speed is incredible um it's some of the best yeah. in the league um yeah, but he has a change up and is actually really good at uh looks good at inducing swings and misses so it's going to be really interesting to see uh what that does for him yeah it's nasty no no I agree um 
And yeah, no, so that was just going over the Braves there real quick. Um, and then in terms of uh, the NL Central, um, I myself had the Milwaukee Brewers winning, uh, which was not the favorite, I would say. Um, the the interesting thing about this division is, in all honesty, I think four, uh, not the Pirates, but four of the five teams could probably win it. I mean, I think the Reds, ah, I don't know if the Reds could win it, honestly. I don't know if they have enough runs in their lineup to do that, to do, to pull that off. Um, I do think they have the pitching. Um, but I mean, wouldn't you generally agree with me? I mean, four out of the five teams could probably pull it off. I do think the Cubs with Arietta, Davies, um, I think the Cubs could win it too, honestly. Um, but I had the Brewers and then of course the Cardinals who are the favorite. Um, what's, what are your thoughts on the NL Central? Okay. So I agree with pretty much everything you say, and this is something I've gone back and forth a lot about. Um, so, okay. So I'm trying to find, so, okay. I agree. I have the Brewers. Uh, winning i i think they're probably the most well-rounded team yeah in terms of having good starters uh they have a great bullpen best uh, bullpen in the league their lineup isn't great i'm expecting a big bounce back here from yelich uh but yeah they, you know they have pieces they're good defensively i think overall they're a solid team i think they're gonna win it Mm -hmm. I think, uh, but yes, I agree. Any of the Cubs, Reds, uh, Brewers, or Cardinals could win it. I mean, really, the Cardinals. do you think Cincinnati has enough just runs creation ability? That's terribly worded. I mean, do you think they have enough offense to win the division? Because the answer is an overwhelming yes. And I was actually going to touch on this. I think they have, okay. So the uh, all right, let me let me find this stat. Yes, so in 2020, the Reds' batting average on balls in play. So a stat called BABIP. BABIP. You know, folks, league average is about 300. Mm -hmm. The Reds' BABIP in 2020 was 237. Hmm. The Reds were statistically the unluckiest hitting team of the last 30 years in 2020. Wow. And they still made the playoffs. Yeah, I, they're, listen, tra losing Trevor Bauer hurts them. We, we've had our discussions about Trevor Bauer, but we both agree he's a good pitcher. Mm -hmm. he, losing him definitely hurts them. Yeah. Uh, you know, you still got, you still got Gray and Castillo. And you got some guys behind You him. got Wade Miley. Wade. I like Tyler Mayo too. I, I think he's really good. Um, no, yeah, they, no, There's some pieces there. You got, and I like the, uh, I like the hitting. I, I like, I don't care. I know it. They were, they underperformed in 2020. I think they can be good in 2021. That's, so. <laughs> that's interesting. The stat you said, because I thought you were going a completely different route um, in the fact that, their lineup is just loaded with power, um, you know, and they kind of have so, yeah. like a Tampa lineup. With power hitters, you'll have slightly lower bad lifts, right? Because you're more like fly ball oriented. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe you'll be like 290 or 295. Mm -hmm. You won't be like 237. Yeah. Like 237, when, it, when you're that low, it doesn't matter if you're not hitting the ball hard. It doesn't matter if you're hitting fly balls. You're just so... That's just so unsustainably unlucky that you have to assume that there's going to be a regression to the mean or in this case, oh, yeah, getting better yeah. like progression. So, yeah, I think I'm a little bit higher on the Reds than most. I still don't think they're going to win the division, but I do like them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cardinals are another really interesting team because I think they have a lot of good pieces and then a lot of not good pieces. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you went out and got Arenado. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Goldschmidt, right? Yeah, those two guys in the middle of your lineup, that's good. Uh, 
I like Harrison Bader. I know he's hurt right now. Oh. But I am oh. I am a big Bader. I am a Bader, bro. I will oh. say that. I wanted him on the Mets. And then Cardinals fans told me that he's not being traded. Uh, but <laughs> elite outfield defense. He's got some pop. Yeah, he swings and misses a lot. But I overall, he's a. I think he's an average hitter uh, when you look at overall value. Uh, yeah. I like Dylan Carlson. He's probably my rookie of the year pick. He hit the ball wow. really hard when he had a cup of coffee in 2020. He uh, also hit like 130. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, the underlying metrics said he was better than that. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm putting my trust in Carlson. Mm -hmm. You know, I like Jack Flaherty. He's of course, a really yeah. fun pitcher. Uh, he got some interesting pieces in the bullpen. But I'm really concerned about the back end of their rotation. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the interesting thing about Milwaukee is, is I mean, they're really doing, it, at least it seems, a four-man rotation and then potentially a bullpen day, um, you know, with like Suter or uh, yeah. Devin Williams starting. Uh, I, I believe he's injured right now. But um, Brent Suter by the way, is probably my favorite non-Met in the league. I know you're going to say that because he led the league in Sierra um, and he throws 85 it's miles. It's not even over. that. I didn't even – see, okay, I didn't even know about that uh, before. Like, I learned he led the league in Sierra. I'm like, oh, cool, that's my guy. Yeah. That dude is hilarious, and he seems like an amazing person. Yeah. He's yeah. like uh, – he can do any impression under the sun. Really? He's, like, hilarious. I, I love him. But anyway, yeah, I – 